Hi, God bless you. I want to welcome you back to our Wednesday night Bible study. I am First Lady Alexis Hammond and I have missed you. Oh God, I've been out of your midst for a couple of weeks. I had knee replacement surgery. And as we speak now, I'm going through the recovery with therapy and you guys continue to pray for me. That therapy is therapy. <laughs> it's all good. Hallelujah. I thank you so much for your support. I thank you so much for the cards that I receive, the flowers, the food, the blanket, uh, the money, the cards, the phone calls. Oh, you guys have been awesome. And I thank you so much for everything. And also, I thank my husband also for being there for me. He's my cook. He did everything for me. It's kind of nice. <laughs> But truly, I'm so thankful to uh, now I'm getting around a little bit better, which is awesome. I want you to continue to follow us on all of our social media platforms. We really thank you so much for your participation. And as the pastor said, I like what he said. I know you like me, but I want to make sure you hit that like button. God bless you. Amen. So we're excited now for our Bible study on this evening. I know we're going to get an awesome word from the man of God. So make sure you have your cup out. God bless you. I love you. All right. Good evening. God bless you um, this evening. Listen, it, it was good to be able to see First Lady on um, this evening and to be able to have her to just kind of share with us and uh, uh, just hear her voice and see her face. It was good. God is yet blessing her. Continue to pray for her. Amen. All right. God bless you on this evening. I am Pastor Marcus Hammonds. Yes, and I'm ready to get into the lesson for this evening. All right. If you have your Bibles out, let's go to 1 Peter. The first chapter and verse 10. 1 Peter, the first chapter and verse 10. And let's see what the God has to say to us on this evening. This is exciting, exciting evening. All right. 1 Peter Chapter 1, verse 10, and it reads, Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently. That's important. Who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. All right. All right. I want to talk, take up for a theme on this evening. Uh, the great expectation of salvation, the great expectation of salvation. We talked last week about how to rise above extreme uh, circumstances and adversities. But today uh, we want to continue on in that same vein and talk about the great expectation of salvation. Salvation is deliverance salvation you know you think about the children of israel they were under egyptian bondage for 400 years all right so for 400 years they were in great anticipation of salvation and salvation came they were delivered and they were able to walk into the promised land Hallelujah. And so right now we're waiting for that great expectation of salvation. Amen. So notice in the text it says, of which salvation the prophets. All right. Now, understanding this, the prophet assignment is to communicate God's message. All right. The prophet assignment is to divinely communicate God's message. His assignment is not to manipulate, but the prophet assignment is to communicate God's message. Praise the Lord. All right. So then we see from Genesis to Malachi. Hmm. We see prophets, we see, we, are, we see many recorded prophecies of the coming Messiah. Amen? Now, now one of the most familiar uh, prophecies that you may find is in Psalms 24, verses 1 through 10. Let's read that. 
Let's read that. This, this, is, this is worth reading. This, we have to read this. Uh, Psalms 24, very familiar, verses 1 through 10. It says, the earth of the Lord. The earth is the Lord, excuse me. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. Hmm. For he have founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He have he that have clean hands and a pure heart. Who have not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. Verse 5. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Now you see the word Selah there. I was always taught that you don't read the word Selah. It just means pause. Hmm. Verse 7. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lift up, ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? Hmm. Hallelujah. The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Verse 9. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Even lift them up, ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Verse 10. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This is a prophecy of the coming of the Messiah. Hallelujah. Look at Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah 53. Verses 3 through 5. Isaiah 53. Verses 3 through 5. Another familiar passage of scripture. Another one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. It says, he is despised and rejected of men. Mm. A man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And we hid as if were our faces from him. Mm. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Look at verse 4. Surely he has borne our grief and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Ooh. Verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Mm. And with his stripes, we are healed. Hallelujah. This is a prophecy of the coming Messiah that you found from Genesis to Malachi. The prophets were prophesying the coming of the Messiah. You got to understand the coming of the Messiah meant salvation. It meant deliverance. Mm, hallelujah. It meant coming out of the bondage of depression, under the bondage, out from under the bondage of oppression. Ooh, hallelujah. Now, Although no prophets knew exactly what time Jesus was coming. They could not tell exactly when he was coming. So you know what they did? They diligently searched the scriptures. The text said diligently. That's what they did. They diligently searched the scriptures. I think that's most critical for us today. 
This is what's probably what's most important in this lesson today. We must diligently search the scriptures. All right. Reading books, they're fine. It's good. Get all the education you can. That's excellent. That's great. Amen. But most of all, we must diligently search the scriptures. In that we find the answers. In that we find peace. In the scriptures we find joy. Hallelujah. And then what they did. Praying. They were diligently searching the scriptures. And praying for a more thorough understanding of the coming of the Messiah. So what did they do? They meditated and prayed. Meditation and prayed. Prayer. So critical. So critical. If you want to be blessed in this life, you need to make sure you meditate and pray. Amen. Wow. Okay. And so the, they realized the coming of the Messiah would change their lives. And remember, remember these uh, Christians were under great persecution. We told you on last week how many of them had to leave their home and just sometimes with just the clothes on their back. Mm. They had to leave their job, leave the churches, sometimes separated from family. They were under extreme persecution. But he had a great expectation of salvation, of deliverance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then watch this. It let us know, it let us know many have gone on. Hmm? Many have come and gone. But they have not seen the Lord and Savior. But they receive a good Report you find that in Hebrews eleven thirty nine, Amen. Abraham came and went, Amen. But he received a good report. It's it's powerful. You must hold on to the faith, hold on to God's unchanging hand, Amen. Hallelujah. Because the Bible lets us know. Watch this in Galatians four and four. That's why you must hold on. It says in Galatians 4 and 4, but when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law. Hallelujah. And so uh, God, look how God did. This. He's such a, a God of decency and order of doing things decent and in order. Uh, see, so he sent his son under the law that those who were under law might be adopted as sons hallelujah god knows what he's doing he's just an awesome awesome god wow i want you to get this i want you to understand this and not just live a life that's living a life on the surface just wanting the good stuff what seems so good and pleasurable for now and if I tell you to study the word of God, you say, ah, nobody really wants to study or read the word of God. But listen, sometimes the things that you don't want to do are the very things you need to do the most in life. As you saw my wife today and she's rehabbing her knee and all is going well. But as she's rehabbing that knee, she can't look at just what she sees on the outside. All right. She had to understand that what the most of the healing is going is taking place on the inside, what she cannot see. So stop worrying about what you just see on the outside, what looks so good, what feels so good. To, but you keep doing what's necessary, amen, that's going to re, so that you might receive that crown of life. You're living in great expectation of salvation. So she's not just looking at what she sees on the outside, how she feels on the outside, but she keeps doing what she's doing. She keeps working that knee out. You don't feel like doing exercises. You don't feel like stretching that knee back and forth. You just want to let that knee stay in one place. 
But as you exercise, as you move, as you are diligent with it. And listen, when she goes to therapy, they give her exercises to do. So when she comes back, if she's not any better, first thing they're going to say to her, have you been doing your exercises? And if she says no, then they're going to say, listen, you have to do your exercises. This is how you're going to get stronger. You have to study the word of God, saints of God. This is how you're going to get stronger. This is how you're going to have the peace you're looking for. This is how you're going to have the joy that you're looking for. This is how you're going to have the contentment you're looking for. Study the word of God. Be diligent. Woo! Hallelujah. Because we want that salvation grace. Hallelujah. Thank God for salvation grace. Is salvation grace given to those who don't deserve it? Sure it is. Were you ever at a point where you rebelled against God? Were you ever at a point where you disobeyed God? Have you ever in your lifetime rejected God? But thank God for his salvation grace. Thank God for his favor. Amen. And so today we live in that great expectation of salvation. All right. Stay right there. And we're coming right back. And we'll jump right into verse, uh, our next verse, verse 11. God bless you. All right. God bless you. We want to get right back into this exciting word of the Lord on this evening. Uh, we are in first Peter, uh, the first chapter, and we're now going to verse 11. We're talking about the great expectation of a salvation. Praise the Lord. All right. Let's read first Peter one and 11. All right. He says searching what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify. When it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Hallelujah. All right. So we're talking about the great expectation of salvation. So here in verse 11, all right, the, the men and women of God, they're, they're, they're searching the word of God. They're trying to understand and figure out, if you will, when will this great suffering take place? When will this glorious time take place? You're talking about Christ having to do this great suffering. Then you're talking about this great glory. When will this take place? Amen. And so you got to understand the prophecies concerning the coming of the Messiah were scattered throughout the Old Testament. From, like I said before, from Genesis to Revelation. So it was like uh, working through a jigsaw puzzle. Hmm. All right. Now, but now remember, when I say that, remember in Bible times, they did not have concordance. They did not have notepads. They did not have reference books. They did not have study Bibles. All right. But watch this. In Bible time, we read and uh, we do read in Luke, the second chapter, we got revealed to Simeon. You will not die until you have seen the Christ. Mm -hmm. We read of prophet Anna who departed not from the temple, but stayed there in the temple day and night, serving God, fasting and praying. Hallelujah. And so when uh, the infant Jesus was brought to the temple. Anna was right there glorifying and praising God. And then she went out and told all of Jerusalem. I've seen the Christ. I've seen the Messiah. Hallelujah. Wow. And so, but here's, but here's the sad conclusion to it. Watch this. Watch this. The majority of the people rejected Christ. Look at John. 
the Gospel of St. John, the first chapter, verse 11. Let's read it together. It says, He came unto his own, and his own receive him not. His own rejected him. They had been waiting for the Christ. Where is the Savior? And when Jesus came, they rejected him. Hmm. Matter of fact, it was his own that would crucify him. But rejection, I need you to hear this. Don't miss this. Rejection leads to the blessed redemption. Hear this now. Rejection is actually God's plan of salvation. And so uh, it tells me then, listen, listen, stop looking at life from the surface. Stop judging your life by what you don't have and what somebody else does have or do have. All right? But you got to understand Listen, you got to continue to search the scriptures. It may not always, you may not always feel like it. But listen, I found out that things you don't feel like doing are actually the things, the very things that you just need to do. I tell you about my wife rehab. Okay, so she cannot just look at how her knee looks on the outside. She can get this courage looking at how the knee looks on the outside or how the knee feels from day to day. But what is encouraging is what's going on on the inside. The healing that's taking place on the inside. You got to know that God is moving on your behalf. He's working it out. It may, it may seem like a jigsaw puzzle right now, but God knows exactly what he's doing. It's all working out for your benefit. Amen. Don't forget the great expectation of salvation. We're living with the great expectation of salvation, not just the here and now. Amen. All right. Let's go to chapter verse. Um, excuse me. Let's go to verse 12. And let's conclude this lesson on this evening. God bless you. I'll be right back. All right. God bless you. Welcome back. Our lesson concludes tonight in verse 12. In verse 12. We're in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 12. And verse 12 is really exciting. We're talking tonight about the great expectation of salvation. Remember, salvation is deliverance. Salvation is coming out from under the oppression, out from under depression, uh, out from under affliction. All right, let's get into this word of God. Look at 1 Peter 1, 12th verse, and it reads, Unto whom it was revealed that not, that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desired to look into. Amen. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. And the word of God is blessed. Amen. Now, we look at verse 12. This was really exciting. And, and this gives a great conclusion to what we're talking about on tonight. Amen. It's amazing that the combined prophecies of the prophets unknowingly to them. Watch this. This is exciting. We're setting the stage for the coming generations like us to be able to recognize Jesus Christ as the coming Messiah. Amen. Wow. 
God is truly amazing. God is truly amazing. Amen. Think about it. Their prophecies, which were somewhat vague and ambiguous, <laughs> to say the least, right, uh, are very precise and understandable to us now. Therefore, without a doubt, we now know beyond a shadow of a doubt, we now know Jesus is the fulfillment of Scripture through the prophecies of the old prophets of old. We now know that Jesus is the Son of the living God. We now know that Jesus is the King of kings, that he is the Lord of lords. We now know that Jesus is the Savior of mankind. Hallelujah. We now know that Jesus is the assurance of eternal life. Hallelujah. Through the prophecies of old, through all of these combined prophecies of old, is now very precise, is now very understood. And we know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Woo. So watch this. At the conclusion of the verse, Peter says, These are the things that angels desire to look into. What are you talking about here, Peter? All right. You have to understand. Let's understand this very clearly. The angels had witnessed how, watch this, God created the heavens and the earth. The angels had witnessed how God stepped out of nowhere, spoke to nothing, and created something. The angels then had witnessed how God breathed the breath of life into man, and man became a living soul. Hmm. The angels had witnessed how God made a path through the Red Sea. How the waters congealed to the right and the waters congealed to the left. The angels had witnessed that. The angels had witnessed sin Daniel delivered out of the lion's den. Uh, the angels had witnessed, hear me now, the three Hebrew boys being de de delivered out of the fiery furnace. The angels that witness the walls of Jericho coming down, down, down. Mm. But what excited the angels the most? Hmm was seeing God's plan of salvation. Mm. To see the accomplishment of the shed blood. Wow. Uh, to observe sin being forgiven and hearts washed clean. This excited them the most to watch sinners become saints to watch the immoral now become moral this excited them the most the angel of God truly understood God's plan of salvation oh hallelujah glory be to God watch this look at Luke 15 and 10. Go with me to Luke 15 and 10. And it says, Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repented. See, that's what excited the angels the most. The great 
expectation of salvation, seeing the great expectation of salvation come to fruition. That's what excited them the most. Wow, we're looking forward today to this great expectation of salvation. Make no doubt about it. God is coming again. Stay strong. Stay faithful. Stay encouraged. Hallelujah. God is soon to come. God bless you on this evening. Stay right there. Uh, my wife will be coming back. So glad that she's able to join us on this evening. She'll be coming back with closing remarks and the closing prayer. All right. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much for uh, being a part of our Bible study. Wasn't it an awesome Bible study? I truly enjoyed our pastor on this evening. He was talking about the great expectations of salvation. What a powerful word. God is just so good. We want to also thank you for following us on our social media platforms. You have did an awesome job and we thank you so much. Continue to do that. We really, really appreciate that. You can follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. And then we also have our Bible study Monday through Friday from 6.30 a.m. to 7 a.m. And then we also have our Sunday school lesson during that same time. What an awesome time. God bless you. Why don't you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for this day. We know this is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh God, we just thank you, Lord Jesus, for allowing us to be back, Lord Jesus. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much, Lord, for the word of God, Lord. We ask the Lord that someone's heart be, be um, penetrated, Lord, by the word of God. Continue to encourage us, continue to lift us up, Lord Jesus. And we also are praying for the sick and shut in. Lord, you know who they are, Lord Jesus. Someone has a special prayer request, Lord. Let their prayer, prayer request be granted, Lord. These blessings we pray in your great name. Thank God. Amen. God bless you.